So the Detroit Lions just went out and they signed Desmond Trufant to a two-year, $21 million deal with $14 million of it guaranteed. It's a pretty interesting move. I mean, it might seem like a bit of an overpay, but I think that he is a pretty decent player. He does have his faults, but he also definitely has his strengths. There was a period in time when he was debatably the best press corner in the NFL. He was a really good press corner and just a corner in general, but... Lately, it hasn't really been that way. He has kind of deteriorated to some degree. You know, it was really 2016 was kind of like his his big year. But since then, it hasn't really been as good. I mean, if you look at last year, what his stats were, I mean, he only played about half of the snaps that he usually does. But despite that, he still had a career high for interceptions. So that's pretty good. However, that's kind of where the good ends in terms of statistics. He gave up five touchdowns, which if you stretch that, that out for a full season, that's 10 touchdowns, which is a ton for a corner. He also gave up a passer rating of 106.3, which is not very good at all. Uh, you know, Also, 17 yards per reception, that's a bit on the high side. A 67.6 .6 reception percentage, that's fine. That's nothing really, honestly, too notable. But I, I do think that part of why his numbers are pretty bad was just because the Falcons defense as a whole was bad although you know not exactly going to a great situation with the Lions but who knows they could turn it around I suppose however I do think that he has some clear faults and some clear positives let's go into some of the the faults first and then we'll get into some of the positives this example is going to be a, a play of just a fault this is the bad thing that he he will do from time to time and it can really have some negative impacts where it's going to be a cover three zone that's what the falcons are in and what the titans are going to do is they're going to run play action and then have a receiver run that route right there this is great against cover three as i'm sure you you've heard if you've watched some of my videos you know i've talked about this before you love to do this against cover three because what it does is it it brings some of the linebackers further in, which can allow you to throw over them easily and be able to make sure that you can get a completion further down the field. So True Font on this play, he's the one who is lined up with the receiver running that route. But remember, this is a cover three zone, so he's in charge of covering the zone on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. That's what he's supposed to cover. But look at how after the ball is snapped, notice how quickly he's gonna bail right here. He does it instantly I mean the second the ball is snapped he's turning around trying to make sure he doesn't get beat deep this is huge because then when the receiver does cut in he gets wide open because Trufant had to make sure he didn't get beat deep and then he also screws up later on which allows that to be a touchdown you know he couldn't even make the tackle afterwards so not only did he go all out to make sure he avoided getting beat deep but he even missed the the tackle afterwards after getting beat like that which is definitely not very good. Now, some would argue that, yeah, he turned around a bit too early, but he had to make sure he didn't get burned deep. When you're playing cover three, if you're in charge of covering deep, you have to make sure that you don't allow anybody to get past you. So that is true, but that kind of brings me to my point, which is I do not think Trufant should be playing press coverage too often. I know that's weird to say because that was what he was elite at back in the day, but I think that at this point, he gets burned deep with speed. That's just the reality of the situation. And when you have a corner who isn't that fast, what should you do? You should not have them play a ton of press coverage. This is why you'll sometimes see an older veteran type player who played corner all their career transition to a safety later in their career because maybe they're still just as good as everything else except for speed. That's the one area they deteriorate, and so you'll move them to a safety. And I'm not saying you have to move Trufant to a safety, but you could at least potentially just have him play off a little bit. Another problem he absolutely had was giving up touchdowns. Sometimes those two things go hand in hand, the press coverage and the touchdowns. Play like this, it is press coverage as you see. Receiver running deep, and after the ball is snapped, notice how quickly, again, Trufant has to turn his head away. Almost the second the ball is snapped, he sees a receiver running deep, and he's turning his head back. And at this point, I mean, if you have to turn your head back that quickly no matter what, if you're not going to be able to turn around and make a play on the ball, you probably should be playing further off and just accept the fact that if they go for a four-yard completion, you'll give up the four-yard completion. Because even for Marcus Mariota, that's a very easy throw for him to make. Trufant had no chance. I mean, he didn't even see the ball coming because... He isn't fast enough to get to A.J. Brown. That's who he was covering. 
And when he's going up against a fast receiver, he's just going to have problems. And, you know, quite frankly, there's a lot of fast receivers in the NFL, so he's going to have problems a lot unless they're more willing to to work with him and to maybe not have him play press coverage too much. Although also worth mentioning, Detroit does like to play press coverage a lot. Maybe they feel like they can fix Trufant in some way. I don't know. Maybe they have the plan of let's just put him deep or something. It's hard to really say what their plan is, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I've been kind of outspoken about I don't love Matt Patricia, but you know what? I will give them the benefit of the doubt on a move like this because I think Trufant actually does have some talent. One of the things he does really well is he makes some really smart plays, and this play is a good example. Again, it's going to be that cover three. It's a very similar idea. That's going to be Mike Evans' route. We've seen Trufant get burned like this before. One thing you will notice about Trufant is if you look at him, he is not playing press coverage right here. He is playing a little bit off. He's facing Jameis Winston, the quarterback, as opposed to, you know, facing Mike Evans, the receiver. And this is what I would want Trufant to do more frequently is things like this. This is the positioning I like. And notice how when he bails out, now at this point, he can look over and he can see the quarterback. And when he can see the quarterback, he can make a play. He still has very good ball skills. He just needs to make sure that he's not putting himself too far out of position. So when Evans does cut in, he's almost given up on that route because he has no chance. But Winston said, YOLO, I'm going to throw it there anyways, which resulted in an interception. And that's just the kind of play where I feel like when you see something like that, it should just tell you, okay, now we know how to use this. You have to know how to use each tool in your toolbox. This is how you use that tool. You don't make him play too far off. And quite frankly, Trufant is great at coming in as opposed to going deep. When he has to run shallow, he can do that very well. Like on this play, it's going to be man coverage this time. It's going to be a, a cover two man. And he's going up one-on-one, -on -one, and that's the route he's supposed to cover. So this is a tough route, quite frankly. I mean, this is probably the worst situation if you are going to be playing deep. You know, he's playing pretty much eight yards off his assigned man. And on top of that, his assigned man is going to run a very quick, shallow route towards the middle of the field where Trufant is going to have absolutely no help. So for Tampa Bay, this is pretty much a dream situation on paper. But after the ball is snapped, notice how Trufant quickly realizes what's going on and does a great job of breaking in to not allow there to be too much separation. Now, worth noting, I did not say zero separation. There is some separation. A perfect throw is probably a, a completion, and even just a good throw and a good catch is probably a completion. But it isn't a perfect throw. Trufant knocks it away, and, you know, that's Chris Godwin he's going up against. Not a scrub by any means, but Trufant is able to make the play, and I think that I would feel way more comfortable with Trufant trying to make plays like that than trying to make sure he doesn't give up touchdowns. And uh, that's just my take on Trufant. I think that you shouldn't try to make him what he once was. Try to use him to his best abilities now. That's what I would recommend. You know, that's just my opinion. That's what I think they should do. I'm definitely not an expert. All these guys, even Matt Patricia, know more than I do, obviously. But, you know, I do think that he has some talent. I think that if you use him properly, he can still be a very talented player. I really do. I think in a vacuum, who is better, Trufant or Slay? It's hard to say. They're actually both kind of pretty similar guys at this point, where they have both had some really high highs and also some low lows, quite frankly. So it'll be interesting to see which one of those two exactly ends up being the better player, because obviously the Lions moved on from Slay to get Trufant. They also did get some draft capital back, so you could argue that it's a good move then. You're getting the cheaper option, and you got draft capital in the process. And also, Slay wanted to leave, so it's not like they just chose to get rid of Slay. It's also pretty interesting to see what they're going to do in the draft. There's a lot of interesting things they they could do, but uh, I think maybe this means that they're going to end up with going with Simmons with the number three pick, assuming that, of course, Chase Young and Joe Burrow are both off the board at that point, which seems like that'll probably almost definitely happen. It's interesting stuff, but you know what? As someone who has been very critical of a lot of the moves the Detroit Lions have made, I am not going to be critical of this one. I think it's actually a pretty good move. I think that they're kind of, you know, again, buying low on a guy. That's one of the things I like to see teams do in free agency 
is look at a guy who has some talent but maybe isn't getting used properly or maybe just uh, has had some down years and see if you can try to revitalize their career. And if you can't, well, you're already paying for a decent player as opposed to a great player and you're getting a decent player. So I think there's logic here. I do think that Trufant can be a very good corner. And now, you know, again, like I said, you get a third and a fifth round pick with the Slay trade. You're getting somebody who's pretty similar. So I think it's it's some uh I think it's a good move. I like this move. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I know it's kind of kind of a meme to hate on the Detroit Lions, but I actually like this move. So let me know. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.